Today is the video that a lot of you have been waiting for. I've been saying I'm gonna make this video for months. Here we are today. Thank you for your patience. This is gonna be a video where I just dive in to the law of attraction, new age, things like that. Tell you my experience, tell you why I no longer practice them, why you should no longer practice them or think about practicing them. Really, I feel like I need to make this video because I was into that stuff a little bit over a year ago and I'm so grateful to the Lord for bringing me out of that because it is not of God. And I'm gonna go into all the details in this video. Now, I just wanna preface this video first by saying, I am not an expert on these things. I'm just gonna share with you my honest experience and what I've learned along the way. I also do not want to come across as judgmental of anyone who does practice these things or has in the past. There's literally not an ounce of judgment because first of all, I did it myself. And second of all, I just want to make everyone aware and speak the truth and love to you guys just because I was so deceived for so long and I don't want anyone else to be deceived. So know that this video is coming with a pure heart and with love. If you guys are new here, by the way, I'm Sophia. I make videos all about college, lifestyle, and faith videos. So I'd love it if you would stick around and subscribe because I'd love to have you here. Anyway, I don't wanna ramble on too much. I feel like this video might be a little bit on the longer side anyway. I think I'm gonna have little timestamps here if you scroll over the video, if you want to go to one specific topic. I've got my notes on here. I've done lots of research for this video. Let's just go ahead and hop right into it. So first we're gonna start out with what is the law of attraction? Not everybody knows, and I'm just gonna give you a little brief rundown. I'm not gonna go into the history or the bulk of all of it, but I'm just gonna give you a little bit of an overview. The law of attraction is basically the belief that positive and negative things and experiences will be attracted to you based on your positive and negative thoughts and beliefs. It's an idea that you manifest everything that happens in your life, whether that's a good experience or a bad experience, and everything is based on your subconscious thoughts, what you tell yourself, what you believe, and it's very emotion-based. Kind of just gives yourself manipulation over your reality. This article says, simply put, like attracts like. If you think a negative thought, it will attract negative energy or things. And if you think positive thoughts, you'll attract positive energy or positive things into your life. And a lot of the law of attraction is considered to be a part of the whole new age movement, which is more than just the law of attraction and manifesting, but it comes down to psychics, tarot cards, zodiac signs, crystals, mediums, different spiritual energies. And that is completely unbiblical and not of God, but of the devil. Now, before I lose you, because I know a lot of people are thinking right now, how dare you say that's of the devil? Like, I practice that. I use psychics and tarot cards and crystals and everything and law of attraction to be positive and loving to everyone and attract good things into my life. And I'm gonna touch on that in a little bit, but please stick with me, I'm getting there. But the law of attraction and the new age movement together have kind of become its own spiritual practice that people often put above worshiping God and reading the Bible. A lot of it just involves asking the universe and setting intentions for what you desire and just believing that it's yours already and it'll come to you. And basically when you manifest something according to the law of attraction, you're supposed to match the vibrational frequency of whatever you're trying to bring into your life. So a lot of that means living as if, which is a common law of attraction practice where you set intentions, you journal, you speak affirmations about things you want in your life and then you pretend that you already have them and kind of live as if you do because that's matching the vibrational frequency. I see it all over social media, TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, and it seems very harmless and as if it's very light and positive and something that we should all be doing. But when you actually look into what the law of attraction is, it is not rooted in Christ. The law of attraction does work and a lot of people use it and they really do see results from it. I don't believe that the laws of vibrations are true, but chances are if you're living for something, saying affirmations about it, taking those attainable steps to achieve those dreams and goals that you are really living for, the chances are you're going to attain that somehow because you're subconsciously working towards those whether you realize it or not. So to go over some typical law of attraction techniques that are really popular today and some that even I practiced back when I was doing this, living as if, like I said, visualization, journaling, speaking affirmations to yourself, setting intentions, raising your vibrations, releasing your desires into the universe, witchcraft, spells, and I'm sure there are many more new age techniques that I'm not aware of, but those are just a few to name. So now we're gonna talk about some of the good things that the law of attraction seems to give in different new age practices and kind of 
why it can be really easy to fall into and be deceived. I want to start out this section of the video with a Bible verse that I'm going to base off some of my next points. It's 2 Corinthians 11:14, 14 and it says, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. The Bible warns us that the devil is on the move and he's constantly deceiving us and tempting us and even when things seem positive and light and beneficial to our lives. If it's from the devil, it is never anything we should be engaging with. That's why we have to have open eyes and be aware of these things. We need to pray for wisdom and discernment to know what's from God versus what's not from God. The first step in that is just being more aware and not just blindly following everything that you think is good. There's a lot of truth sprinkled into the law of attraction to make it more believable and it's a way that the enemy can deceive us into thinking it's something that's okay. And here's an example of some affirmations that are used in the law of attraction. So for example, I am wealthy, I'm a goddess, I'm popular, I am the coolest person ever. Just things like that where you're glorifying yourself. As followers of Jesus, we should not be putting ourselves on a pedestal. We're not here to glorify our own bodies and our own personalities, but we're here to glorify the Lord. All of us have a purpose on this earth and we're handcrafted by God. And he gives us each unique gifts, talents, and ambitions, but that's not to glorify ourselves or gain a following or get everyone to love us. So any affirmation that's putting yourself or a material thing above God is an idol. In Luke 12, 15, it says, be careful to guard yourselves from every kind of greed. Life is not about having a lot of material possessions. And then 1 John 2, 16 says, for everything that is in the world, the desire for fleshly gratification, the desire for possessions and worldly arrogance is not from the Father, but is from the world and the world and its desires are fading away, but the person who does God's will remains forever. So I just wanted to share those verses because it can be so easy and tempting to follow and chase after the things of this world for popularity, success, wealth, relationships. Those are all things that as humans we desire. And a lot of those desires are from God if they are coming from a pure heart, but a lot of the law of attraction focuses on just worldly and fleshly desires that we want to have instantly. Whatever you're living for is your idol. So if you're living to gain wealth and material possessions, and if you're living to attain this certain career goal, or living for a certain relationship, or living to put yourself on this pedestal, even if it may seem harmless and like they're good things, that is an idol, and that is putting those above God. Even gifts from God can become idols. Idolatry is something that I struggle with today. Even little things that can often be unnoticed, I'll realize I'm putting that before God when I should be following him first. And I do think affirmations are great if they're not rooted in law of attraction based thinking or material fleshly desires. So here's a list of good affirmations you can say instead. I can do all things through Christ. I'm never alone. I am made worthy by God. I am loved. I have courage through Christ. Those are just a few examples. There are endless biblical affirmations you could use that are rooted in Christ. That actually will make you much stronger than any affirmations you could ever say to yourself. So now I want to share with you guys some of my experience with the law of attraction. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I'd be sitting here for a long time talking about it, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview. Basically, I've grown up my whole life Christian and I always considered myself to be a Christian. I always loved God, but I wasn't actively pursuing him. I didn't really have a relationship with him. So I came to college and I obviously considered myself to be a Christian. Like I said, I even was going to church every once in a while and just living my life. I never had intentions of doing anything apart from God. So then the end of my freshman year, I started hearing about the law of attraction more. I feel like it was always on my YouTube homepage and all over Pinterest and Instagram. And I just always saw these YouTubers making videos about manifesting and living your best dream life and just creating your own reality. And I feel like to anyone that sounds very appealing because if you have the power to create a life that you dream of, why would you not want to do it? You know what I mean? Especially when you see all these other people around you that are your age and very similar to you doing the exact same thing and they're seeing good results with it. So of course I wanted to try it out myself. So I started just slowly researching it and watching YouTube videos about it and reading articles about it. And I just quickly got wrapped up in it without even realizing what it truly is rooted in. I just remember I would journal every day, but it wouldn't be normal journaling. I would journal out like different affirmations and journal entries as if I'd already achieved my goals and everything. Looking back at those entries, it's just crazy to me that like I was so deceived and I didn't even realize it. The affirmations that I would write down, it's just so self-focused and self-centered and all about you. Literally the law of attraction is all about you and living your life. I was just so unaware that it was against my Christian faith. As I was practicing all these things, I was still going to church. I was still praying. I didn't really have a relationship with God. 
at the time, but I didn't really know any different. I kind of thought I was just doing my good part as a Christian. I didn't really see any problem with what I was doing. And that's the scary part. Like I started getting deeper and deeper into it. The summer after my freshman year of college, I really got super sucked in. And I remember it was beyond just the law of attraction at that point. I found this old teacher named Neville Goddard. And I remember he used Bible verses to support his teachings. He literally took scripture and used that in his argument. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, if he's using scripture, it's definitely okay to do then because it's from the Bible. But that's a true example of being deceived by the enemy because he was using Bible verses taken out of context to support his argument. And I just wasn't rooted enough in scripture myself at the time to be able to discern the difference. So I just blindly believed it and followed it. And I was like, oh, then it must be something from God if the Bible is involved. But no, I remember my belief started changing so much and it left me feeling so empty. So I was really into Neville Goddard's teachings. I had his whole complete book set. I'd read pretty much all of his books about your subconscious mind and how really every single experience you have is connected to a previous thought you had either yesterday or like a decade ago, which is so weird to think that I truly believed that to be true. I remember I started just getting so anxious about my thoughts. I was scared that I would attract horrible things into my life because I struggle with anxiety and I was scared my anxious thoughts would actually manifest and happen. I was basically just living out of fear for a little bit, just trying to just knock out my negative thoughts with positive ones and suppress those and just, it was not good, not healthy at all. I remember even paying for this subscription. I don't wanna give away the name of this YouTuber because I don't wanna bash anyone, but he makes videos all about Neville Goddard's teachings. I was paying for his monthly subscription as a part of his community of other people that followed Neville Goddard's teachings. I remember being in this whole chat community with these people and a lot of them were so nice and they really were just trying to manifest good things into their life. There were other people in that group that were just so self-centered. A lot of their desires were kind of rooted in pride or rooted in evil. And I remember just slowly starting to realize like, that's not good. That just does not seem right. Like some people are using this for the wrong reasons. And being in that whole community really made me aware that a lot of times a lot of attraction is used for bad things and people that are so greedy and just want everything for themselves and prideful. That's the first time I kind of noticed that this might not be something good. You know, I always thought of the law of attraction and following these teachings as a way to just live my own best life, still following God, but also doing this at the same time. I thought you could do both, but you cannot do both. I was living for myself and following the world on in this hand and in this hand, I said I was still following God but that's literally impossible and the bible says that you can't you can't be double minded you can't be half in the world and half living for god it just does not work i just remember feeling empty like if something kind of went wrong or i wasn't seeing my goals come into action in my life i started to blame myself and tie that all back to my own thoughts and say it's my fault that this bad thing happened it's my fault that this person got sick it's my fault that basically everything i'm experiencing like that's negative. It's based on my own thoughts. And that's so just messed up. I It just makes me sad that I ever truly believed that and started practicing those things in my everyday life because I was just so lost and deceived. That is the true definition of being deceived. Long story short, I was still practicing these things as a sophomore in college last year. And it wasn't until like probably February of 2020 that I started becoming aware of what I was following and believing. I remember I started growing in my faith more at the same time that I was practicing these things, which is kind of ironic, but I started going to church more. I started making more Christian friends. And I remember someone lent me a book called The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. And it's a great book, by the way, I highly recommend it. But I was reading that book over quarantine in March. I remember reading a page and it said something about prayer and how a lot of times people will say they're in prayer, but it's really just visualization or just daydreaming about their desires and not even including God in that. And I remember just sitting there like, wait, that's literally the definition of what I've been doing for all of these months, just visualizing and doing all these law of attraction practices and techniques when I should have been talking to God the whole time and sitting in true prayer and worship of the Lord. And it's just pure conviction in that moment that I needed to step away from that completely. So I started going down this whole rabbit hole of research of the law of attraction and how it's really not rooted in scripture and not from God. And I started learning so much more 
about how the enemy can so quickly just confuse us and tempt us to follow these certain things because they look good and appealing, but they're so far from God, even if it just goes unnoticed for so long. So I was just learning all these new things, all these light bulbs were going off in my head, and I was like, this is not okay. And I immediately just canceled my subscription to that Neville Goddard group. I unsubscribed from all the Law of Attraction YouTube channels, and I spent a lot of time in prayer after that, just asking for God's forgiveness, and God is so quick to forgive, he loves us. And I'm so grateful that he brought that to my attention and brought me out of that and made me aware of my sin because I just had no idea. We're just so lucky to have a God who forgives us and loves us and guides us and is patient with us through our struggles and our mess ups and our sin. That's just a very short story of my experience with the law of attraction in the new age movement and i hope that helps some of you guys if you relate or have experienced anything similar or if you're considering the law of attraction or any new age practices i strongly encourage you to not do that because i started watching other testimonies of people that went from new age to jesus and a lot of them are much more in depth than mine or much more intense like people have had actual demonic encounters practicing the law of attraction. So I just want to warn you guys, the enemy is real and he will try to deceive you and tempt you, but that's why we need to be rooted in Christ, put on the armor of God every day. We don't have to fear. The enemy wants you to go down his path, but the Lord, his way is the best way and it's filled with so much love, light, and joy. And I don't feel that emptiness anymore that I was feeling when I was chasing after all these worldly things. God is so fulfilling and I just am so joyful because I have him. And that probably seems very cheesy to a lot of people, but when you feel the joy of the Lord, you just, you can't hold it in. And I know a lot of you guys relate to that. If you don't, I encourage you to spend time in prayer and ask God to show you what it feels like to be joyful for him. I'm going off on a tangent now, but I just wanted to share a little bit. I want to read you guys this little paragraph. It says, there's a common new age belief that everything you experience and everything that happens to you is a sum total of your thoughts and subconscious beliefs. The truth is that we live in a fallen world. Sin exists, sin is a thing, and that's why bad things happen. Someone's sickness isn't because of negative thoughts they had. It's because we live in a fallen world where pain exists. God works all things for good. And I remember when I was practicing the law of attraction, I used to be fearful of bad things happening, like I said, because of my own thoughts. But now it's important to say, God, I surrender this fear to you. I trust you. Thank you for being in control. And when we pray that, it's so freeing because God already is in control. And when we fully surrender, it's just this freedom that we don't have to have everything figured out. When we let him guide us, we live such full and free lives that we never could have even dreamed of ourselves. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. And that's very powerful, and that's something that I need to remember every day. This last thing I'm going to share with you guys, I know this video is getting so long. Thank you for sticking with me this whole way. If you're still here, I appreciate you so much. This is going to be worth it. I'm going to read this to you and put it on the screen. So I follow this Instagrammer, Ali Yarid, Yarid, I'm not sure I say her name, but she made a thread about witchcraft. I'll put it on the screen for you guys too. Witchcraft works. I know it's real, but so is sin. Sin works. I know it's real, but that doesn't mean it's good. Manipulation, manifestation, tarot cards, crystals, Ouija, the list goes on. It's real. It's scary. Don't open doors for demons. Don't play with what Jesus died for. That hits. She also said, witchcraft does not necessarily mean you claim to be a witch. Witchcraft means you're participating in a craft that's goal is to manipulate, control, or be yoked together with demonic powers for personal gain. Witchcraft is far more common than you think. I don't believe there's good witches the same I don't believe there's good Christians. Neither exist. Only God is good. Only Jesus has the power to save. Christ alone is where our identity is found. Don't dabble in darkness if you claim to follow the light of the world. And with that one, I was like, ouch, because for so long I claimed to follow the light of the world, but I was still practicing these things. And there are just a couple more. I know this is long, but these are all so good. You don't have to call yourself a witch to practice witchcraft. I called myself a Christian, but still practiced witchcraft. The demonic encounters are not to be messed with. The seeking of control, power, peace, healing, joy, and hope outside of Christ is not to be messed with. Stay far away from witchcraft. Stay far away from manifestation. Stay far away from the law of attraction. Stay far away from opening doors for demons. You can find temporary pleasures in all those things, but you will find yourself in hell for all eternity. Stay far away. Witchcraft is a sin regardless of the intention. And then she has a bunch of Bible verses if you guys want to look those up. And then lastly, witches are real, demons are real, Satan is real. I'm not saying this to scare you, I'm telling you how scared they are of Jesus. 
They're evil, yes, but they have lost. They have no power over Christ. Even today, they tremble because Jesus holds the victory and he is coming soon. So I just wanted to end with that because I think that was very well said, better than anything I could have crafted. <laughs> that was a mouthful. I just spoke for a long time, but I get passionate about this because I just want to make other people aware of these things and I just want to see all of you guys have a relationship with Jesus because it is the best. I don't e I just don't even have words. I know that a lot of you guys are probably like she's just some Jesus freak that like we get it you love Jesus but I just can't contain it. I know I probably sound cheesy right now but he's just so good and he loves you so much. Whatever your past is, whatever you're going through now, the struggles you face, the darkness you're in, know that there is a way out and that's through Jesus. Jesus is with you every single step of the way. He cares for you and he's not condemning you for the way you're living your life or your past sin. He forgives you and he is pursuing you. I don't know if you have a relationship with him or not, but he's inviting you into one because he adores you and there's just so much joy and freedom living as a follower of Jesus. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end it right here. Um, I love you guys so much. If you've made it to this far in the video, that means a lot to me. And hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I'm also gonna have a ton of resources linked down below if you want to check more of these out. I'm gonna have videos, articles. Also, if you want to, please subscribe for more videos. I am planning on making many more faith videos like this one as a part of my Faith Diaries series. Also, be sure to check out my Instagram if you wanna see more of my life and I can interact with you more over there. I love you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.